An essential tool for measuring sack size is a sack gauge. This one shown here is a nice reproduction um, of a design that I think probably goes back to the 1930s, 1940s. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. There's a series of holes um, and they're labeled with the number of the sack size that goes through them. Uh, as a reminder, the number of the sack refers to the hole size in 60 fourths of an inch. And uh, this sack, for example, will test it. Doesn't It can be pushed through the 30, 23 size, but it's supposed to fall through freely. 24, it falls through freely, so that's a 24 size sack. Uh, this sack, let's try it here, 16, doesn't fit, 17, doesn't fit, 18, 19, ah, there we go, so it's a 19 sack, and, you know, you get the same idea, we'll do the same here, this one is a 16, so we have a 16, a 19, and a 24, the 24 being necked, which we'll discuss later. Now, where do you get a sack gauge like this? There are suppliers for them, but if you really want to do it on the cheap, all you have to do is get a fractional inch drill gauge. And this is an example of the sort of cheap thing that you can get for, well, under $10, uh, as cheap as 4 or $5. You can get them in plastic too. Um, either will work. Before we move on though, I wanted to address something that I saw in another video a while back, and that was, and it sort of blew my mind, that some people are using these sack gauges to measure sack nipples or sack peg size, and that's not at all what they were meant for. And we're going back to our little Waterman 52.5V nib section assembly that we uh, looked at in the other video. And we look at it here, and if we use it as the gauge as a sack gauge size, see it fits in the 16 size sack. Now as you recall, this is our 16 size sack. Oh, falls right through. And if we try it in our, as we'll remember, if we try to put it in here, it's much too large to fit in here. Well, it'll go in part way, but you know, that's the wrong sack. So that's the wrong, that's the wrong way of using a very useful tool. It's just a complete misunderstanding. Now in our previous example, we had the Waterman 52 and a half V, and that's an example where the sack size, um, the sack actually fits very tightly on the nipple, and as a result, um, the correct sack size is smaller than you would think. Now sometimes the sack size, it goes the other way around, and uh, that's typically the case when the pen originally had a, um, a necked sack. So one of these instances here is a Japanese-made pen sold under the Spores name uh, in the pre-war era. And these pens always have, they're, they're kind of hard to open up, but they always take a really, um, they always have a really small sack nipple. So if you look in the barrel, you can see it's pretty capacious. And uh, I already pre-measured it, but it takes a 19 sack. That fits in quite nicely. There we go. Um, but what happens if we try to put it on the nipple? It just, it's not even close to fitting. It's so, so loose. Um, what it actually, what actually fits on is a 15 size sack. I mean, that one is about the, there it just stretches very slightly there. So if you were judging, if you were if you were going from uh, nipple size, that is the sack you would have picked. But if you use that in here, you can see it's it just swims in there. It's it's not at all the the correct fit. Um, what happens also is, of course, this is a Conklin style crescent filler, and what happens is it doesn't support the. It doesn't support the um, the crescent in the in the correct position because it's so small. So when you try to work it, it it kind of jams. It sits too low. Um, that doesn't happen with the uh, correct size sack, of course, because in that case, 
It keeps a nice gap, and so you have no trouble operating the lock ring no matter what. All right, so how do we deal with this? How do we deal with a number 19 sack that's correct for the barrel and a sack nipple that's too small? Well, it's really simple. All you do is you have to build this up slightly. And uh, what you do is, well, I've already done it. I've taken a little cutting off of a number, off the end of a number 15 sack. And uh, again, it's not difficult to figure out that uh, it's not a bad thing to keep a few of your extra cuttings around just for this purpose. So we'll put a little bit of shellac on here. Pop this on. Oh, getting out of our field of camera view there. Okay, so as you can see now, there's still plenty of room. And uh, normally I'd let this dry first before putting on the next layer, but you get the idea. You put on the shellac, and then on goes. And there you have it. It's a pretty simple solution. And there you go. Well, we'll put it together later. That's not really the topic of this video, so um, hope that's helpful.